out here in the garage doing a bit of overclocking with this uh, Asus GTX 560Ti on the Asus Rampage 4 Extreme motherboard with a Xeon 1680V2 which is an 8 core 16 thread CPU you can see there we're at 4.625 gigahertz with 37 times 125 uh, the memory is just pretty much uh, XMP speed, so we've got 2000 MHz, 99924, and we're still at 2T. Uh, these G Skill flare sticks that I've got in here don't really like overclocking very much, so I'm going to sort the memory out later, but we are in quad channel. You can see here we're at uh, just over 1000 MHz on the GPU, 1030 on the core, and 1150 on the memory and uh, just to show you the ASIC quality of this GPU it's 84.1% which is pretty decent for a, a GTX 560Ti so yeah the maximum CPU temperature so far on water cooling is 53 degrees the CPU is underwater with the 1080 radiator but I've only got 7 fans on and we're just running 3D Mark 11 this is the previous score I got at 1020 megahertz. So now I'm going to do uh, a run at 1030 and see how it goes. Got the screen resolution set to 720p. So yeah, watch it as it goes through. See how it goes. So there we go, we've got the score. You can see we're scoring 5,491 on the graphics score. I quite like to get that to 5,500. Um, and on the physics score, 21,000 combined, nearly 5,400. So it is scoring slightly lower than before. Um, the highest GPU score I've had is actually 5526 so I need to get it back up to there so I'm going to keep going and uh, go to 1035 I'll also just show you the maximum temperature that the GPU is getting to there you go 64 degrees Celsius and I'll carry on and see how far it will go just finished the run at 1035 megahertz and as you can see got 6195 just finished the run at uh, 1040 megahertz now still on the same card 100% fan speed max temp 64 degrees and you can see 6220 5500 5400 about 25 to 30 fps so 1045 megahertz on the core 6256 so 1050 now it'll actually focus and you can see the score 6282 almost 5600 on the graphics and almost 5500 on the combined now right we've clearly encountered a glitch in the matrix here because it got 33,800 fps on GT2 and obviously it must have reset itself so yeah it did you can see that the fan speed's gone down from 100% and the voltage has gone down as well so maximum clock was actually 1050 and 2300 on the memory so I'm just going to reset it all and then what I'm going to do is um, say back to where it was like that 
to say the fan speed and the voltage has gone back up. And I'm going to go up on the memory now at 20 megahertz at a time, which is obviously uh, half because it's actually uh, 1160 now. And uh, see if the score gets any higher. Obviously, this score is invalid. Still running the same system. So, yeah, that crashed. So, that's uh, not happening any higher on the memory, which I didn't think it would. So, it's gone higher on uh, air, on the core, than I tested before. It only did 1030, and now it does 1050. The memory was 2300 max before, and it's still 2300 now. So, there we go. Let's move on to 3D Mark Vantage next. So we've just run Vantage at 1040 megahertz to start with. Uh, obviously a CPU testing Vantage is quite a bit uh, more demanding, so it's now hitting 60 degrees maximum instead of 54, which it hit before in 3D Mark 11 physics. And we've got a score of 28,898. Obviously a GPU scores around 24, CPU scores around 65 isn't too bad for this CPU. My 5960X gets over 70,000 points and the 3900X can get like 80,000 or 85,000 or something. So yeah it's not too bad this CPU at all. Anyway I'm going to carry on and see how far it will go. So we just finished the run at 1045 and we got 29,169 CPU score drops bit lower that time but GPU score went up so yeah let's carry on probably get stuck at uh, 1050 again but we'll see I've also now put a big fan in front of the card to see if it will cool any better because uh, this benchmark's a bit longer than 3D Mark 11 just finished the run at 1050 megahertz in 3D Mark Vantage we're now at 29 227 the score didn't go up very much that time and the CPU score is kind of low again. So, yeah, we're going to try 1055. Um, see if it crashes, which it probably will. But we're going to go for it anyway. There we go. 1055 megahertz, and it has crashed. No surprise. So, yeah, that's pretty much it can't do anything else without going to higher clocks on the CPU so that might be it for this one so I've uh, just sorted the CPU out we've run it again at the same settings and we've got a couple of extra points I think only about seven uh, but you can see now I've sorted the memory and CPU out a little bit so we're running 4.75 now and with the memory we're running 797. Unfortunately it won't post at 1T today for some reason, but the other timings are fairly decent. But I think the command rate's really holding it back. So yeah, it got a few extra points. Got a few extra points on the physics test, but obviously the graphics score and combined score didn't really go up much. Run Vantage again at 10.50 on the GPU but I had to lower the CPU clock a little bit so I've just gone with 127 base clock to bring it down to 4.7 because uh, before I had it 4.75 and that was stable in 3D Mark 11 but not Vantage so let's just see what temperature it got to on the CPU so it's getting 68 degrees now on the CPU, so it was a little bit warmer, but you can see we got a tiny little bit more score, not very much, but oh, it's got 66k on the CPU score, which is nice. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this card, because the uh, CPU and memory pretty much done, and uh, the graphics card is done as well. So I'm going to move on to SLI next, and see what we can do there. Right, so we've got the uh, 560 Ti set up in SLI now, or both cards in, so I just need to enable SLI here. There we 
go. So I'm going to run 3D Mark 11 again. So I have put the CPU back to 4.75, and I've also hooked up the Elmore EVC2S here, which allows us to read um, the amperage and voltage directly from the CPU, which I'll show you in a second. So there we go, we have both cards in SLI. It's good. So down here on the uh, laptop you can see it shows the CPU voltage, the current, um, the power, temperature, this is VRM temperature I think. Um, and then the output power of the VRM, input and output power, uh, and then efficiency obviously. So, yeah, basically uh, this uh, little Elmore EVC2 is plugged into this wire, which plugs into uh, just there next to the start button on the Rampage 4 Extreme and uh, it just reads uh, some stuff that you can't get in Windows basically so I'm going to overclock the GPUs I just need to find out which one is which so I'm pretty sure that's the Asus one and then number two is the Zotac one, yeah that looks correct so first thing I'm going to do is put the fan speed to 100%. Now they might be synchronised. Yes, they are. They all need to be synchronised. Let's just reset that. Yeah. So. So number one was the Asus card, let me just put that down to minimum. Yeah, that is the Asus card. So I'll put that back up again. In fact, it's still got my overclock saved there. So I'm just going to apply the, the same overclock I was using on the Asus before uh, without SLI. So it's 1050 and 2300 on the memory. And then for the other card. I'm going to go with um, 1050 on the voltage and can't remember what's on the uh, core of memory so one second I'll just stop. So I've just checked the clocks for the uh, Zotac card which is the one with the Mono Plus on and 950 was the max and 2340 on the memory. Obviously I might be able to increase that because it's quite a bit cooler in the garage than it is in my room. So hopefully it will be stable at 960. But I know at this voltage before it was getting to 79 degrees on the GPU temperature. So yeah you can see there it's 28 and 29 at the minute. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, so yeah let's run. So while well, that's uh, going away there, I'll uh, let you have a look at the graph for the CPU. You can see it's pulling just over 100 watts in the graphics test, so obviously it's not very loaded up. And it's going down to about 1.377 volts at minimum is the output voltage. The efficiency is around 80%. And you can see the temperature is around 67 degrees. So there we go, over 9,000.
Well, I've just realized I don't have the screen resolution set correctly. So I might just rerun that again. Obviously I'm going to rerun it with a slightly faster clock speed on the Zotac card. You can see GPU 2 only hit 58 degrees, which is pretty cool. Uh, maximum CPU temperature 61 degrees. Now we've done a couple more runs. I managed to get the Asus card up on the memory a little bit and we've also got the Zotac card up a little bit. Um, maximum temperature for the CPU is now 62 and cards are at 73 and 66 and you can see we've broken 10,000 here quite nicely. Uh, hopefully we can get to 11,000, I'm going to try that next. So yeah, let's keep going and see how high we can get. So we've managed to get a little bit more out of the Zotac card. Asus card is still the same on the Zotac card. Managed to get up to 975. Uh, it's now running at 77 degrees max. And we're at 10,931. We'd really like to get over 11,000. But it is getting pretty close to the limit now, so we'll see, I guess. So, as just crashed with the Zotac card at 980 MHz, so obviously um, we do need either more voltage or whatever, but it does get quite warm. I'm going to give it a go with some more voltage, maybe 1100 millivolts, and see how it goes. But I'm going to reboot the PC first. Yeah, so it's still crashing at 980 megahertz again. Reached 81 degrees this time. So I think both these cards are pretty much maxed out now on air cooling. I'll have to put the Zotac one under water to keep up with the Asus card. So I'm going to move on to 3D Mark Vantage now. For that I'm going to have to drop uh, 50 megahertz off the CPU and uh, we'll be able to see how much power it pulls on the EVC in 3D Mark Vantage because that 3D, the 2D test is a lot heavier than 3D Mark 11 so that'll be interesting. So it's just coming to the end of uh, GT2 now. We are getting some weird blue artifacts everywhere on the screen but I just wanted to show you what the EVC is outputting. Um, onto the screen down here in the physics test. So, there we go. See how much power it's using. So yeah, it's only using about 100 watts apparently. 110. You can see the uh, temperature going up. Although actually I've just realised the uh, dots at the other end are there, that's about a 250. There we go, that's CPU test 1 done. CPU test 2. Not quite as aggressive. How many amps is it using? About 200. 180. So yeah, let's go in now, 210-ish watts, so GT1 is actually heavier than GT2, or sorry, CPU test 1, physics test 1 is heavier than CPU test 2. That's it, it's done, excellent, let's see what score we got over here, so 46,487 and we got 66,000 on the CPU score which is nice, 42k on the GPUs and we dropped uh, the Asus card down quite a bit and I also dropped the Zotac card down quite a bit as well just because this is a bit of a longer benchmark than 3D11 so it seems to be a bit heavier 
can see the CPU actually got up to 69 degrees Celsius this time and the GPU's got up to 70 and 77 so I'm just going to creep the clocks up slowly on both the cards and see if I can get a better score but I'm pretty happy with this, it's a pretty decent score Coming to the end of GT2 again, we've got significantly less artefacting this time I think it's just the SLI bridge to be honest so let's see what it does in the uh, physics test here and there we go it's done so let's just see what it got here uh, 46,800, I'm not sure if that's better than last time. The CPU score is actually slightly higher. Um, I think the score might be a tiny bit higher, maybe 100 or 200 points. But I didn't go up very much, so we'll carry on anyway. So we have managed to creep over the 47,000 point mark and the 40, 43,000 on the GPU score there. You can see I've got the Zotac card up to 970 and 2333 and the Asus card is still at the same as before so I'm going to keep creeping the Zotac card up a little bit more uh, probably another 5 megahertz on the core and then we'll start on the Asus card We've had a first crash advantage here so show you the clock speed went up to 10.45 on the core and 22.70 on the memory for the Asus card and that's what killed it you can see the GPUs were getting up to 80 degrees uh, the Asus card 71, the Zotac one 80 and the CPUs hit 70 degrees throughout all of these runs which isn't too bad um, so yeah I think that's the limit of these two cards I did get a run over 47,000 I think it was, so that's decent and 43,000 on the GPU score the last run, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to move on to uh, a different GPU now and uh, that's it for these two cards. So yeah, pretty decent setup. I think uh, next time going to put the Zotac one underwater, see if it can keep up a bit more with the Asus, hopefully get it over a thousand megahertz and get 1.15 volts through it. Uh, I've only been able to run I think 1087, uh, it's, it's that one that crashed, it was only running 1087 millivolts so that was the problem card there. Anyway, that is uh, that's it for these two cards, so I'll see you in the next one, goodbye.